is the start of week nine in the FC Decode season, and it's time to come up with a plan for the week. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and I for over a decade now, and I have mentored FTC teams to national championship wins in our region. And by the end of today's video, you will have a solid step-by-step -step plan for what your builders can be doing, what your programmers can be doing, and what your outreach team should be doing so that you can find success in the FTC Decode season. So the overarching goal for this week is looking at, it's, it's sort of the programmer handoff and it's your portfolio layout. That doesn't mean the build team is necessarily done, but the goal for this is your competition robot should be finished by the start of this week uh, for your first qualifier. That doesn't mean that it is your end robot when it's all said and done, but you should have a functioning chassis that no longer has any major changes being made to it. Minor tweaks is okay, but anytime you spend building, means your programmers have less time to make your robot more consistent and means your driver has less time to actually practice. So for your build team, what should you be focusing on? Now it should be time for you to swap your robots. So if you remember, and you've been following through my design, if you haven't been following through this plan, one of the big goals is that you hopefully have two robot chassis. One of these chassis is a programming chassis. The one is a prototyping chassis. You kind of have a competition bot and you have a prototype bot. And it's time to swap back for bots. So while your program has been working on the prototype chassis for quite a while, it's now time to swap so that the programmers were in competition and now it's your turn to work on the programming chassis. So now's the time for you to go back to the brainstorming, back to the ideation stage as a builder and think, what can we do for version 2 or version 1.1 or version 1.4, whatever that may be, if it needs to be a version 2 in general or perhaps, you know, a version 1.7. For your design now is the time to start thinking about that start brainstorming by this point in time there should be the you may have even seen some first qualifying tournament or league tournament uh, competitions coming up from some of the larger regions and taking a look at some of that footage and seeing what robots seem to be performing well taking a look at some of my ftc friday's content and seeing what robots seem to be performing well at this point and now you can start dreaming about what might we want to do for our next robot iteration do we want to consider a major design change something like going from a boot kicker intake to more of a rolling compliant wheel intake or to more of a rubber band intake or vectored intake or something along these lines now is a good time to start thinking about a shift and looking at what other teams have done in their prototyping and what seems to be working well for them because you're about one team you're going to do so much prototyping and when you can collectively build up a community you can start saying okay Based on my capabilities and my team's capabilities, what are things that we think we could realistically build and realistically implement? It's likely you're a, not a team of uh, full robotics engineers who've been building things like Unity G1 or a Tesla robot here. So you have to think about designing within your team's means. And now's the right time to be going about doing that. So it's time to go out, do a little bit of R&D is your goal for this week. See what kind of other things might make your robot a little bit better so that next week you can come back with some fresh designs. Programmers, it's time to take possession of that competition bot. You should install and integrate that code, tune your motor values, and begin testing your full robot functionality. This is a good week for you to start tuning your uh, Pedro pathing or tuning your Roadrunner, because typically these tuned processes have to be done with your exact robot's weight and its amount of weight orientation over the individual wheels, so it's a good time to spend this week do some tuning processes. While that tuning process does take a while on Pedro Pathing and on Roadrunner, uh, it's a good time to develop that so that you have your finished competition chassis and you know there's not going to be any shifts happening on this build point. So you should be able to tune it once, tune it well, and you won't be able to have to, or you should not have to tune this again before your next competition. It's also a good time as, as you're running these tests, make sure you're cleaning off any sort of rubber compliant wheels that you're using or compliant systems, giving a quick little rub down if you're using mechanism wheels or perhaps a swerve drive, whatever sort of soft rubber traction you have, make sure that's clean when you're doing these tests that you don't have inconsistent variables pulling in different data on your robots. So it's really another week of testing. And as a programmer, you can get really, really used to that. Lots and lots of testing, lots and lots of verifying that things are actually working as you'd expect. So it's time to get some of that autonomous tuning set up so you can set up for some actual autonomous routines. Now that hopefully you've got your mechanisms mostly tuned well with that uh, sort of base class mechanism there. So if IntelliOps should be tuned, then you can move into uh, your autonomous sections. So the outreach team, it's time to get a cohesive design on that engine portfolio. 
One of the biggest advice that I can give you is to set up your engineering portfolio set up by awards. Try, you can try to tell your story season, but in my opinion, when judges are looking at portfolio, they want to look at the specific awards that they're applying to. So if I'm looking for the outreach, I should be able to go to an outreach section inside of your journal. If I'm looking for a motivate section, I should be able to look into that, or I can't remember if it's motivate now, it might be sustain and connect. If they're looking for the Sustain Award, they should be able to go to that section and see it. If they're looking for the Innovate Award, they should be able to go to a section and see that. So try to lay out your portfolio by award ranking. Not necessarily a a full cohesive timeline of your season, but rather looking at the awards themselves. Because you got to think about what's the purpose of your portfolio. And the purpose of portfolio is submitting it for those judged awards. So the easier it is for judges to find the awards and the information they need on that, they don't have to do any sifting through your portfolio, the more likely your chances are to be able to get higher points and make sure that the judges actually see that learning that you've been doing to be able to actually demonstrate that. So select any photos you have. If you haven't been taking any photos up to this point, make sure you do so now. And then start actually looking through some sort of creative professional looking document. There are lots of programs out there that allow you to exist to be able to make these things uh, set up a little more uh, integrated. And my suggestion is that you do something like a, a document or a .x program like Google Docs or Microsoft Office or Apple's Pages uh, or even a text edit. Have those for your notes and then trans- once the notes are flushed out and they are written as you'd expect and they are uh, well articulated, then you can move it into your final design program so you're not having to make text edits in your design program. That's where you're actually just kind of combining and putting things together. If you're making those design edits in your design program, I think you're doing those things on the wrong, or sorry, not the design edits. If you're making a semantical or word choice edits inside your design program, I think you're kind of putting the cart before the horse there. It's the wrong way around. So you should have some kind of flushing out and probably about 70% of your journal done this point and start thinking about what is a cohesive uh, color choice for you to go in. Uh, some other design principles that work very well is using two text fonts, one text fonts for your titles and one text font for the actual body of it. Try to keep your theming consistent throughout and then make sure you have a consistent color scheme as well. Uh, it also helps if you can make that consistent color scheme similar to your robot if you can, and if you had the the time to be able to buy certain filaments so you can have those things up in certain colors. This goal here is your program handoff and your portfolio layout. As well, if you're a build team, it's sort of your R&D session. So builders, take a look at what you can work on for the next one. Programming team, start doing some tuning for your autonomous. Make sure you have your runners, your pager path things, or your custom pathing projects, whatever it is that you're doing. Now's a good time to start doing that tuning. And the outreach team gets your journal and your portfolio starting to have a cohesive design. If you're looking for more robotics tutorials, you can consider joining the community down below. I've got monthly Q&A live streams. I also have different tutorial CADs and more in-depth thoughts for everything robotics and FTC. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season and best of luck on your next robotics project.